Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial bite for Oxygen Not Included, which is about rooms and how to use them effectively. Starting with the basics, a room is any enclosed space in the game, and enclosed here means surrounded by tiles and or doors. Note that doors can be set to open and the room will still count. The most useful way to view rooms is through the rooms overlay, which is on the hotkey F11. This view shows you all the rooms in your base, and if you hover over a specific area, it will tell you the room size, building count, critter count, and plant count, as well as any room bonuses. Specific room types are colour coded, and all of the types are listed down the right hand side. You can always refer to these in game. The benefits of having rooms are generally either allowing the use of a specific building, or for providing morale. I explain the rooms that provide morale in a more focused way in the tutorial bite for skills and morale. I point out here that when building a base, it's advisable to use four tile high rooms which are considered a standard height. This is as high as the dupes can reach from the floor level, meaning you can fully build anything within the room, but the ceilings will need to be built from above. I'm going to run down each of these in turn, and explain why and how you might use them. Miscellaneous rooms are really the default room, when there's no other clear type. This usually happens when you haven't tried to make a room, or rooms have conflicting buildings. In this case, the clashes will be shown, and you'll need to remove the conflicting ones. Latrines are the basic bathrooms, and have outhouses and wash basins. You'll be able to make these right from the beginning of the game, and they're useful as they give a small plus one morale bonus. These latrines can be upgraded to washrooms later on, once you've researched lavatories to replace the outhouses, and these give plus two morale. Although you don't need to replace the wash basins for sinks, I would highly recommend you do so, as it's much easier to deal with the inputs and outputs with plumbing. I will cover bathrooms in more detail in another tutorial bite. The other caveat to mention is that these rooms cannot have industrial machinery in them. This is a bit of a confusing topic, and I will discuss this in full at the end of the video. Barracks are the basic bedroom, and are again available from the very start of the game, as they only require cots for duplicates to sleep in. Like the latrine, they give a small plus one morale bonus, which is nice to have. Bedrooms are the upgraded version of barracks, and give plus two morale, similar to washrooms. A decor item is required, as well as comfy beds, which replace the cots. You can have multiple beds in these rooms, as long as the size is still below 64 tiles, but you can make individual ones for aesthetic reasons. Industrial machinery is also not allowed in these rooms. There is some debate as to whether upgrading to bedrooms is worth it, as they take up twice as much space, but only give one extra morale. Dupes will still likely need two scheduled slots of sleep to recover stamina, so if you're playing purely from an efficiency point of view, I would conclude the barracks are better. Of course it's entirely up to you, as the bedrooms do give some bonuses, and they look quite nice. The mess hall is a basic eating area, and only needs at least one mess table. These give a large plus three morale, so a definitely good idea to get early on. Upgrading these to a great hall increases the morale bonus to a large plus six, and is extremely easy to do. All this requires is a recreational building, which can be a water cooler, and a decor item, which can be a decorative plant pot. These can both be unlocked with only basic research, so definitely make sure to get this as soon as you can. Note as well that the Great Hall can be quite large, at 120 tiles, and both of these dining rooms also cannot have industrial machinery. Massage clinics give a bonus to the massage table, doubling their effectiveness. Whilst it is generally best to avoid needing the massage tables in the first place, they can be useful in specific scenarios. For example, dupes requiring many skills on other planetoids in the Spaced Out DLC. If you're going to use the massage table, then make sure to create this room as it only requires a decor item and the massage table effect is too good to pass up. Hospitals don't really serve any function as they're not required for any building use or give any bonus. You can still use all of the medical buildings outside of a hospital with no problem. These were more useful in past patches, but in the current one there's no need to build this. You could of course still have one for aesthetic reasons. The power plant room is defined by the power control station and only enables the usage of this station. A power control station lets dupes with the electrical engineering skill generate microchips from refined metal to apply a tune-up buff that increases generator power output by 50% for three cycles. This can save fuel, but generally I find the time and refined metal required outweighs the benefits. Greenhouses are also in some way similar and are defined by the farm station, which is also enabled by the room. Dupes with a crop tending skill can use the farm station with fertilizer to create micronutrient fertilizer, which can then be applied to plants to give them the farmer's touch buff for one cycle. This doubles the growth rate of the plant, and note that it cannot be used on mealwood. I also tend to avoid these rooms as I have a strong preference for wild farming, and would rather simply have more wild plants than use a dupe's time on the farm station. 
Wild planting is a more advanced technique and I will explain this in another tutorial bite. Stables are required for ranching and there are many types depending on the critter being ranched. This is a big topic in itself and I can't cover all of the details here without making the video very long. I will have a dedicated tutorial series on all the critters, so for now I will just touch on the basics. For room to be a stable, it requires the grooming station, which again enables its use. Dupes with the ranching skill use this to domesticate wild critters and keep them happy when tame. Stables need to be as big as possible, as each critter requires a certain amount of space, usually 12 tiles, before they become overcrowded. By making them the maximum 96 tiles, you can typically fit 8 critters in. I'm showing here an example of a hatch stable, which can be similarly used for slicksters, that is a 25 by 4 room with a door and a tile that keeps the critters near the grooming station, but also allows for a large room. Note that this needs to be 3 tiles high, so the critters can't jump over it, and there's an extra tile in the opposite corner that ensures the room is exactly 96 tiles big. Next, the recreation room is obviously made with any recreational buildings, and this also requires a decorative building and no industrial machinery. Unfortunately, they have no inherent bonus, so are almost useless. The only slight benefit is that dupes will gather in recreational rooms during downtime, which means they can interact and chit-chat, giving a small stress reduction. The last two rooms are the park and nature reserve, which are made by simply putting a park sign into a room with wild plants. These give a big plus three and plus six morale respectively, so are really useful. The only caveat is that dupes need a reason to go into or through the room to get the bonus. Parks have two or three plants, and nature reserves need four or more, and are also bigger, up to 120 tiles. Making these around ladder rooms are ideal, and are most easily made by leaving wild plants in place by not digging them up. You can use wild planting, as I mentioned earlier, to place these more purposely. Having covered all the rooms, I need to explain the term industrial machinery, which is prohibited in some of the room types. Unfortunately, the game does a very poor job of explaining this in any of the in-game information, the term is not available in the database, and none of the buildings will tell you whether they count or not. So as far as I can tell, the only way to know what counts and what doesn't is either by trial and error, or using the wiki as a reference. I'm showing the wiki on screen now, which you can of course find yourself online. This gives you a list for all the building types, for whether they count as industrial machinery or not. So that wraps up my guide to all of the room types in Oxygen Not Included. I hope this was informative, and thanks for watching.